Last speaker for this session before we go to the uh, startup teaser session is uh, Dr. Alon Kofstein, who is a Ben Gurion graduate and now works at the uh, EMC. Thank you. Uh, this is a great opportunity to be the last speaker of the day. I see there's a smaller crowd, but still, this gives me a, an opportunity to summarize everything that you've heard here today. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about, uh, not about algorithms or interesting problems that we're solving or technology. I'm trying to talk about, and I want you to go come out of this talk with the understanding of what it takes to bring value uh, from data science within a corporate, within a company. All right, so uh, this is actually how do we climb within EMC to make more value, to make uh, change within corporate thinking. Uh, so I'm gonna dedicate, I have to stay here, I'm gonna dedicate the first part of my talk uh, about managing data science, managing groups, and then I'm going to uh, delve into a data science project. And I wanna emphasize the difference between, like one just mentioned, the difference between a uh, machine learning practitioner, for that matter, and a data scientist, uh, or a BI person and a data scientist. Uh, so if you're a student, this is a great opportunity for you to understand what it is that we're looking for. If you're from the academia, uh, these are the kind of challenges that we are interested in solving. Uh, so this is really a call for all of you for cooperation. And if you're a company, uh, we always love to share insights uh, with each other. Um, so I'm going to start off with uh, a bit of the obvious, the data revolution. Everyone talks about it if you look at uh, news clips. Uh, all over the world, you see everyone talking about data, 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 more data. Uh, recently, IDC published their Digital Universe Survey, which I'm going to reference in a second. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick note of, of a few of the things that I uh, gathered from the internet a few days ago. So, according to what I uh, found, Walmart, Walmart collects two and a half petabytes uh, of ca customer transaction every hour. All right, there's uh, over 100 hours of videos uploaded to YouTube every minute. I saw, in, I think it was in Daniel's slides, that uh, it said 48 hours, but who cares? 100 hours or 48 hours, a lot of data. Uh, in terms of Twitter, uh, on August, they had uh, 145 tweets, nearly 145 tweets in one second. So there's lots of data coming in if you're talking about velocity uh, and, and volume, and I'm not going to talk about variety at all for that matter. Um, so the data, data revolution is here. Uh, amounts of data are phenomenal. Y you can't grasp it, right? So according to IDC, we're expected to have uh, 44 zettabytes of new data coming in by 2020 uh, on an annual basis, right? So according to this survey, we have about 4.4 this year or last year uh, and 10 times that number. Right, and and it's it's zettabytes. You can't even understand what it. You know, for me, it's it's a phenomenal number. Uh, so there's this data all around it, and everyone's looking how to monetize it, how to make something out of it, how to make value out of it. And here comes this term, data science, that people have started talking about uh, roughly around 2008. LinkedIn is a good is a good place to start talking about uh, data science. I've I think it was, yeah, uh, October 2012, uh, Harvard Business Review, um, their title was Data Scientist, the Sexiest Job of the 21st Century. Uh, my mother was very proud at the time, but, but it's true. If you look at the amount of uh, data savvy people that you're, are required, there's a huge thirst for people who can look at data, understand data, and transform it to value. So it's really on the rise. Um, my friends from Intel here mentioned the hype curve. I'm not sure that, um, I think we're over that hype curve and people are really starting to see value coming out of it. Uh, obviously there are failures, but we'll see more and more gains coming in. Um, <clears throat> so what is a data scientist? Which is a, a question many people ask themselves, it was a question I asked myself when I first started working for EMC. Um, and the best way for me to describe our job would be to provide deep actionable insights from the data but that's really something that I can say you know speaking to my family uh, with my mother uh, at the table you know talking about a data scientist uh, if I want to be more concrete I would have to say that 
uh, my job as a data scientist would be to work with stakeholders, business stakeholders, uh, understand what their pain prom problems are and elevate new problems uh, from their data, from their business processes. And after we have a problem, after we're capable of thinking of relevant problems, concrete problems as one just mentioned, uh, now we have to work on finding the answer. All right, so this is a brief overview of what's a data scientist. Now in 2011, um, our CEO, Joe Tucci, said something like, the question is how do I tap into that data as well as my own structured and unstructured data? That is what is going to make the business of tomorrow successful. Right? And uh, uh, not long after he uh, said that, there was a huge shift within the organization and we started seeing how this is applied inwards within the company and we started uh, building our strong data science proficiency um, and luckily for us it's uh, located in Israel um, and it's not just about building the proficiency within uh, a company right so you need to adopt a culture um, of managers willing to take risk um, and making decision based on data rather than hunches uh, which is what you have if, if you examine a lot of the uh, way managers act today. And lastly, uh, this is an opportunity for every company, no matter what they do, uh, to improve their own set of products by applying the knowledge uh, they gain from their data. It's not just uh, applying their own processes, it's also applying your products. Um, so we know we have this data revolution, we know we have these data scientists who can unlock the data for us, and now you have to think about how do you manage them? What do you do with these people? How do you uh, uh, generate uh, a company that's data-driven, a culture that's da that is data-driven? And uh, when we started off, there were, we considered three alternatives. There is, on the one hand, you have the service provider uh, model, which is closer to what you'll see with external consultant. They come in into your company, they advise on, on how to do and how to apply. They have the skills, they have the expertise, they're all PhDs, uh, they're fancy uh, algorithms that they know how to uh, employ. Uh, but it's always hard working with external customers, right? They have to learn the processes from scratch. They have to learn the data from scratch. And you know what? Sometimes you don't even want to give them some of your data because that's confidential. So that's one way to look at uh, a data science team. On the other hand, you have the product data science team. Uh, our friends from RSA, uh, which was here this mor morning, are a, a perfect example for that because they are a very talented team of people owning their data looking at it day after day, knowing what to seek, knowing which uh, problems will be of interest. And these people are uh, brilliant at what they do. The problem is, if, if you want to look at a, the whole picture at a corporate, you can't scale that up, right? You can't work um, with a dedicated team to each business unit or to each product line. Um, so in our case, we adapted the hybrid model. Uh, which is a sort of a mix between the two uh, in-house service providers which are working with all business units within our organization. So there is that part that you have to learn the data and learn the processes, but you do gain from taking the knowledge and bringing it from one business unit to the other. So there's cross-pollination um, in that model that you can apply. That. There's a lot of knowledge. There's actually the data science suddenly the data science team is suddenly at the core of the corporate and it's, it's for me it's personally interesting but I think it's also valuable for every uh, corporate to have a group of people able to take insights from one business unit and pass it on to the other. Um, so I'm going to talk just I'm going to nearly wrap up this section by saying uh, a few words about our team. Um, like in, in the case in uh, Intel, we're also part of IT, and there's a good reason for that. We're close to the data and we're in touch with all business units. Um, as I mentioned, we're situated here in Belsheva in the, high -tech, uh, the new high-tech park. Uh, we are close to Ben Gurion University and we have good ties. We uh, have our uh, data science course that we give uh, from uh, EMC in the computer science uh, department. Or we're close to other uh, industry if it's, uh, we have uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, right next to the door, for example, we have JVP uh, uh, just below us. We have uh, a lot of other companies hopefully will coming in soon. And it's naturally close to, to the IDF with their whole move. And they bring a lot of insight and a lot of interesting problems with them. 
Uh, and my team uh, is uh, similar to what the folks in Intel mentioned, try to give the whole uh, approach, a holistic approach to data. And it's not just from, you'll hear a lot of data scientists talk about from data to insight. No, so it's uh, from business to insight and to action, which is really the most important and fundamental part. Um, because it's not enough to have an insight. You want to transform it to an action which will bring more value to your client, right? So insight itself won't cut it um, after a while. So that's an important aspect of it. Um, so how do we work in, uh, in EMC? And this is just an example, and I'm going to talk about a lot of the lesson learned from uh, this kind of model. Uh, I'm very interested to hear if, if you have you know, ideas on how to improve this. Um, but typically we work in short-term project cycles, three to six months. Uh, we usually take a high impact business uh, problems or uh, challenges um, and we charge, uh, we, we have a chargeback model for the corporate. And the interesting stuff is um, what is exactly that we provide our customers with. So it can be a prototype which is basically, here is the working model of your data. We, it's not a product, right? It's a prototype. It can be uh, utilized in production, but it's by no means a product. If you want to transform it to a product, there's another step beyond that. We won't take it. Uh, there's a POC. Here's the data sample that we took. Here is what we can do. We can't generalize it to your data in general, but here's the value of, of what you can achieve with your data. It can be an algorithm or an abstract model. Here is what you should do, right? So we looked at your data, here's how to uh, treat it. It can be a summary or a deep insight or a visualization if we have uh, Daniel speaking here about the fact how important visualizing uh, big data is. It's really providing a, a yet another tool for decision makers on, on proper means to, to look at their uh, data. So uh, for the remainder of this talk, I'm gonna uh, talk about this cycle. And every time you'll hear a data scientist uh, talk about what uh, he or she does, you'll see some kind of uh, cycle which really represent what we do overall and, and what a typical data science uh, project looks like. So um, I'm going to delve into each part in, in, uh, in a sec, so I'm not going to go over uh, the entire cycle. So the first part is defining the business problem. Because as one mentioned a few minutes ago, the problems themselves are not clear when you start off. You start off working with the business unit and you have to understand the business process. And this is very, very different than what you'll see in academia when, for example, you want to solve a, a very, very clear question. How many people are more than X? Uh, what is my probability of getting disease Y, et cetera? Okay, um, so there's a lot of learning the business and for all you uh, uh, grad students, go and do some take some classes about business. This is important. You have to understand people. There's a lot of people involved in the process. And once you have a problem, uh, and this is really important to do at the first step of, of the process, is define a metric or evaluation criteria for what would be a success. And uh, this is important because a lot of people often work very hard, and when they get to the result, they say, okay, so what do we have here and what am I measuring in reality? And is this what the business wants? No, this is what the algorithm gave. There's a difference between the two and you want to be aligned with the business as much as possible. Um, a take-home um, lesson learned that I've, I've okay, thank you, um, I've, I've learned over the period, uh, o over my time in AMC is that all the people who are not probably this audience, will probably look at what you do in um, machine learning and think, hey, this is magic. This can do this or that. And, and really, there's, you should align expectations with your uh, business stakeholders. Data science is not magic. Machine learning is not magic. It's mathematics. If you give me garbage in, I'll give you garbage out. Um, so here's a, an example of, of what I just said. If, for example, a customer came to us and he said, I can't act in time uh, to to help monitor my systems because it's a really complex uh, um, system that I'm looking into. And you start working with a with stakeholder and his employees and the business unit. And after a while, you all of a sudden realize, well, there are 150,000 alerts coming in every day and they don't leave you with much time. So now you can define a problem. Okay, can I build a new um, KPI uh, which will tell me 
if, if it's an intelligent health score, will tell me with low false positive rate uh, in advance about impeding problems. And there is always the question of how do I evaluate this KPI that I just mentioned because I want to look into the system and if I uh, generate an alert and someone acts on this alert, so the event never occurs. So there's always the, you know, thinking about how will I evaluate it at the end of the process. Second step is about exploratory data analysis. Um, since I'm a bit short on time, my main point here is actually look at the data. We have people coming from the world of uh, statistics, from machine learning, from mathematics, and what they do is immediately aggregate it. They look at uh, median, mean, uh, variance, whatever. They never look at the data. What does it look? Plot your data. Look at it. Examine it. This is a really important part of your initial evaluation of, of what you have. Uh, look for data quality issues, NELs. Uh, is it even consistent with your other data sources? These are all problems that occur in the industry um, le a lot less in when you look at uh, what you have in uh, um, ready-made data sets. Um, not going to talk about enrichment, uh, but here are a few examples of what happened in some of our data sets. For example, we had repetitions. I'll speed things up significantly. <laughs> um, it, it can be unit changes. It can be just labels which are different. It can be combinations. There is an endless list of possible problems. Um, I will talk about this part because this is probably uh, the part that people miss the most. There's the data, data preparation, and this takes about 80% of our time, right? And the lesson here is, well, people think that data preparation, data cleaning is all about changing null values, removing, uh, removing some rows in, in my um, table or whatever. No, there's a lot more to it. In fact, there's a lot of very... Um, um, complex algorithm or manipulation that you can do on your data or you should do on your data. And here's an example. Uh, if you look at what you have on the original KPI to uh, the right hand side, my right hand, your left hand side, sorry, and you can see it's, it's a KPI that rises over time. It's very hard to follow and it wasn't good enough for the algorithm we wanted to apply. We, we, we needed something that's closer to stationary uh, signal. So you have to somehow manipulate it. You have to follow it with a time series model, for example, look at residuals and try to understand is this better or not. Um, so th this transformation is, for me, uh, part of the data preparation stage. After you have everything uh, ready made for you, good model, and, and this is another uh, important point, a good model will have to incorporate domain knowledge. And uh, we have people from, a lot of people from the medicine uh, MDs coming in and looking at machine learning and time series analysis and, and, and this is obviously something that they have in mind with them. You know, you can't treat the numbers as, as mere numbers. They are part of a broader context and you have to inject that context into your analysis. Um, and finally, you have to communicate your results. Now, uh, since I'm a bit short of time, uh, I want to give you the whole picture again and this time I added all these small icons of, of people over there. Because when you look at a project, it's never just about a data science. It's, it's about a whole bunch of people working together. So there's, you have to convince this, these people and work with them to create the environment for uh, innovation, for data-driven decision-making. And there's a lot of people involved in the process. So you have to have a data scientist that's, po that's uh, capable of talking to these people. So uh, due to uh, lack of time, I, I want to summarize now. Um, so uh, the, the data revolution is here, all right? If you're uh, a company and, and you're looking at a, how do you escape your competitors, start making informed decisions, right? Don't work on your hunches. Um, and data science is probably the best way to go. I don't know any other data, uh, any other uh, way. Um, and when you talk about data science, it's a mix of, of skills. Uh, it's very difficult to find in, in one person, so have a very uh, versatile group with you. you. You have to have business understanding. The core uh, compo competencies that you'd like to have in, in such a group are business understanding, algorithmic know-how, uh, 
agile development capabilities, which are capable of bringing the, the algorithm into real life, and the ability to communicate uh, both to get your input, but also to uh, drive outputs.